chào mừng các bạn đã quay trở lại với kênh học IELTS cùng Alex thầy là Huy. Khi các bạn học IELTS, phần thi listening là một trong những phần thi khó nhằn nhất bởi vì bạn chỉ nghe đúng được một lần, không có nhiều cơ hội để chữa lại câu trả lời. Do vậy, làm bài và ôn luyện sao cho hợp lý là khá quan trọng. Nào, hãy tiếp tục cùng thầy đến với IELTS listening test bài số 16 ngày hôm nay nhé. Bắt đầu thôi. Section 1 This conversation is between two people, Tom and Mary, who are choosing radios, televisions and telephones in an electronics shop. Listen to the conversation and decide which of the items in the picture, A, B, C or D, they are going to buy. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. The conversation relating to this will be played first. Well, here we are. There's certainly plenty to choose from. I'm finding it hard to know where to start. Would you like to look at the answering machines? Let's start there. I like this one. We have a lot to buy, Tom. We can't afford to pay $129 for an answering machine. And we can't afford to pay $127.50 for the dual tape answering machine either. All right. We'll buy a cheaper one then. There's this one for $89 or the smaller one for $59.95. I like the square shape of the small one. It'll fit neatly onto my desk. And it's the cheapest. OK, we'll buy that one. Tom and Mary choose the small square answering machine costing $59.95, the cheapest available, so letter B has been circled. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Well, here we are. There's certainly plenty to choose from. I'm finding it hard to know where to start. Would you like to look at the answering machines? Let's start there. I like this one. We have a lot to buy, Tom. We can't afford to pay $129 for an answering machine. And we can't afford to pay $127.50 for the dual tape answering machine either. All right. We'll buy a cheaper one then. There's this one for $89 or the smaller one for $59.95. I like the square shape of the small one. It'll fit neatly onto my desk. And it's the cheapest. OK, we'll buy that one. Good. Now we need to buy a telephone for the office. I'd like to get a portable phone. You know, one of those cordless ones. Are you sure? I think it's a good idea. We don't need another telephone answering machine, so we can look for a small one. I really like the one with the hinge in the middle. A folding telephone. Yes, that's a good idea. So we'll take that one. Are you ready to look at the other things we need? Yes. Let me look at the list. We need a couple of radios. I want one I can listen to while I'm walking. I know. They're just over here. I don't think you should buy the really cheap one. You mean this one? $17 is a very good price. Uh, that's true but I believe they give a very bad sound quality. And what if you want to use a cassette? It doesn't have any space for a cassette. You're right. Hmm. Well, I really hate the ones where you have to put the small earphones into your ear. Here's one with big earphones you put over your ears. <laughs> it's expensive. It's only $20 more than the one with the little earphones. 
Take it. Okay. What's next? We have to choose a television. We need one which is uh, big enough But to. But not too big. I don't want anything larger than forty-eight centimeters. I really think thirty-four centimeters is too small for our room. That's only about thirteen and a half inches. Okay, let's take the size bigger than thirty-four centimeters. What about another radio? How do you feel about a clock radio instead of just a radio? I don't want a clock radio. I'm very fond of my alarm clock, but I like this radio with the curved carry handle. So do I. It's a good price too. So now we've chosen an answering machine, a cordless telephone, a radio for you to use when you go for a walk, another radio, and a television. Anything else? No. Let's go and have a cup of coffee. Tom and Mary go for their cup of coffee. Listen to their conversation and be ready to answer questions five to ten. Now listen to the conversation between Tom and Mary, and answer questions five to ten. Write no more than three words for each answer. Shopping's hard work. I'm glad it's over. Do you want to go home now? Yes, I think I'll take the things we bought home. Okay, I'll go to the office. I've got lots to do. I'll come back later, straight from the office. Okay, I'd better hurry. My brother's waiting at the house to help carry the television in. Good. I hope he'll still be there when I get home. I haven't seen your brother for ages. No, wait. I forgot to tell you. I'll be late home tonight. I've got a meeting at five o'clock. When do you think it will end? I'm not sure. Still, I should be home by eight. If I think I'll be later than eight o'clock, I'll call you. Okay. It's nice now that your office is in City Square. You don't have to travel very far at all. I certainly appreciate it. Taxi drivers always know where City Square is too. By the way, are you going to watch People of Funny on TV tonight? What did you say? What TV show? Oh, people are funny. Of course I am. I'll tell you what happened when you get home. I need something to laugh at. I'm going to the new office at Newtown tomorrow, and I'm not looking forward to it. I'd better go. Take care. I'll see you later. Bye bye. That is the end of section one. You now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two, you will hear a talk on the radio about grass roofs. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to thirteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to thirteen. And now it's straight into the eco hotspot for today's program. We are in fact going to look at an intriguing trend in recent years in the world of eco-friendly developments. There has been a constant stream of new green products coming onto the market for the environmentally conscious. A new departure, which I feel needs greater attention drawn to it. Is the increasing interest in grass roofs? Environmentalists sing the praises of grass roofs, as interest in sustainable ecological building has led to the greening of the rooftops of residential and commercial buildings around the world. And what does this type of roof consist of? Instead of tiles, which allow water to run off and create flash flooding. 
The roof has a waterproof underlay, which is laid over the roof deck. This waterproof layer is then covered with layers for insulation and drainage. Then, on top of the insulation and drainage layer, is added a final layer of soil or crushed stones for the plants and or grass to grow on. The roof can be planted with wildflowers to add colour and life to your rooftop. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 14 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 14 to 20. As for the benefits of grass roofs, in spring and in summer they are very pretty as flowers spring into bloom. Moreover, in summer, grass roofs are of particular benefit in cities because they keep any building cool by reflecting the sun's rays. In winter, the grass roofs insulate the building helping to prevent heat loss. The roofs require little maintenance and are better than any other roofing material. They encourage biodiversity by attracting bees and birds, and they absorb water runoff, which helps prevent flash flooding. In fact, the gravel layer retains 71% of the rainwater that falls, thus helping to prevent flash flooding. In winter, the brown soil is a bit more evident, which can look unattractive if the roofs are not tended carefully. But that is a price worth paying, and I would say that they come highly recommended by those who have them. If you compare grass roofs with tiles, the latter do certainly look very tidy, but at a price to the future of the planet. The main drawbacks of tiles, though, are the water runoff and the absorption of heat from the sun's rays in summer. So, if we are to save the planet from the ecological point of view, tiles do not come recommended. The only roof that I can think of which has similar ecological credentials to the grass roof is the thatched roof. Thatched roofs are good insulators and very attractive, but very pricey and not ideal for cities. How can we make more of our roofs green? That is, how can people be persuaded to install grass roofs? The World Green Roof Conference in Australia was a very good start. At a grass roots level, the best way to raise the profile of grass roofs is to make them trendy by highlighting them in fashionable magazines so that people begin to feel that they cannot do without them. But the idea I like best is holding competitions for the best designed grass roofs. Next week, Eco Hotspot is going to look at. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You'll hear a tutor and some students discussing eating disorders. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. Good afternoon. I hope everything is going well. 
Right, we've been looking at problems some people have with eating. And today I'd like to focus on one you've probably come across in your reading. It is sometimes called binge eating disorder, or BED. As you know, I am not a particular fan of these acronyms. So I will refer to it by the alternative name, compulsive eating disorder. Has anybody heard of it? Yes, I have. In fact, I read a case study of a first-year university student who was diagnosed with it. Do you remember what the symptoms are? Well, of course, one symptom is that the person eats too much, although that's true for other eating disorders as well. They also put on weight. That's right. Whereas in some other conditions, such as bulimia, they don't and can actually lose weight. One thing that compulsive eating disorder and bulimia have in common, though, is that the person with the condition often becomes clinically depressed. Are you saying that everybody who is overweight is suffering from the disorder? Not at all. What makes the compulsive eater different is the pattern of the disorder. Initially, as we've said, the compulsive eater starts eating too much. This seems to be because the sufferer finds comfort in food and eating is seen as a way of coping with problems. They don't eat because they feel hungry. Mary, in the case study you read, was there any reference to what triggered the problem? I seem to recall that the student was suffering from stress because she was revising for exams and she started eating snacks, junk food, while she was studying. Soon, she was eating snacks all the time, and it just got worse from there. Yes, that sounds plausible, although compulsive eating often starts a lot earlier than the case you describe. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. Anyway, once the condition has been triggered, often by constant snacking, as you mentioned, it becomes progressively worse. Over a period of time, the sufferer loses control of their food intake. They become preoccupied with food, and the binge eating increases. Overeating blocks out negative emotions such as loneliness worries about work, depression and so on. But it is only a temporary effect. Apart from the physical discomfort that overeating often causes, the sufferer begins to feel embarrassed by their behaviour. They then take drastic action to try to compensate. In an attempt to lose weight, compulsive eaters will try extreme diets, skipping meals or going without any food at all for a day or more. Not a healthy way to try to lose weight, obviously. Absolutely. And of course, the person has to start eating again at some point. In other words, it becomes a vicious circle? That's right. Binge eating, extreme dieting, or attempts to lose weight by other means, and then binge eating again. What are the long-term effects of compulsive eating? As you might expect. These are similar to those for people suffering from obesity. Diabetes is frequently reported. What about treatment? The disorder can be treated, certainly. But there's always the possibility that the patient will suffer a relapse and start binging again. What does treatment involve? Medication? No. It normally involves sessions with a therapist experienced in treating eating disorders. A nutritionist will often be involved as well. Are there any self-help organizations? I mean, organizations like Alcoholics Anonymous? Yes, there are. And you might want to follow this one up for your research. One organization is called Overeaters Anonymous, 
and they have what they describe as a 12-step program to help people overcome the disorder. You can find out more from the organization's website. Right. I think that'll have given you plenty to follow up. So I'll see you at the same time next week. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 4. In this section, you'll hear an introduction on the adventure class. First, you have some time to read questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to Adventure Class. I'm the coordinator of the class. During the course of this morning, I hope to give you a clear idea of what we offer in our class. Before my lecture, listen to the comments on the class. Today we sailed into a group of whales. Class takes place in the middle of elephants, giraffes and hippos. Yesterday's lecture was at the Great Barrier Reef. Do these comments sound like your typical classroom? Probably not. These accounts come from students studying in adventure classes. An adventure class is a unique type of program that combines textbook learning with real-life exploration. Students and teachers travel together for a program in discovery and exploration. The class is provided by the Australian University's International Programme, aiming at promoting students' awareness of international communication and global environment. Here are three popular adventure classroom programs that are available to you, college students from the freshmen to senior students. The first one is called Australia Short Programme. The three-week course begins with several days in Cairns. There we hold classes on coral protection, how the corals are formed, what are their functions and what are the threats corals are facing. Students then spend the next two weeks on a study tour of Queensland. Known for its sunny beaches, rainforests and remote outback, Queensland provides a rich learning environment. The highlight of the programme is the tour to the Great Barrier Reef. Activities include hiking, bird watching, and boating. By experiencing local culture up close, Students explore the connection between local people and the environment. Six semester credits are given by the Australian University's International Programme, and the tuition fee is $1,950. African Safari Programme is another popular class. Kenya's stunning wilderness becomes the classroom for students in the African Safari Programme. The five-week course is set on the beautiful 20-acre campus of Australia International University in Nairobi. University professors combine classroom instruction with hands-on experience to teach wildlife management. In addition to classwork, students take trips to famous places such as Mount Kilimanjaro and Victoria Falls. Students also experience African culture through trips to local villages and Nairobi's city centre. But for most students, the safaris are the highlight of the course. The programme includes three or four safaris. During each safari, participants camp outdoors for up to six days. One of the most popular destinations is the Masai Mara Game Reserve. An amazing collection of wildlife lives on the reserve. Students study elephants, zebras, giraffes, rhinos and other exotic animals in their natural habitat. Those who take the course gain many wonderful memories and a greater appreciation for the Earth's natural resources. 
Students earn eight college credits for the program. The cost of tuition is $4,950. The last on the list is C Education Association, SEA. The SEA program is a one-of-a-kind opportunity where students live and learn aboard a tall ship. The course combines ocean research with instruction and personal experience in sailing. After careful instruction, both on shore and at sea, the participants begin practicing what they've learned. Everyone on board takes turns operating and navigating a 134-foot sailing ship. That is the most outstanding. Life at sea is non-stop, so everyone is assigned to a watch. During that time, students work in the lab, in the kitchen, on deck, or in the engine room. Each watch group includes eight people who rotate throughout a 24-hour schedule. They learn how to live at sea and how to work together as a team. Students can choose from three programs in different locations, each about three weeks long. College credit is awarded, and the cost is $3,600. US Is an adventure classroom for you? If the idea of learning through adventure interests you, you might want to apply. It would certainly be an experience you would never forget. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Các bạn thấy bài IELTS Listening Test bài số 16 ngày hôm nay như thế nào? Đừng quên comment ngay phía dưới để thấy biết ý kiến của các bạn. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở những video ngày hôm sau.